Hold on, she's checking sound. I'm still waiting for it to come up, actually. <laughs> if you guys are in the room, feel free to do a sound check. Oh, there we go. Port of Tacoma. Port of Tacoma. And the rail yard. We oh, got voice. We, we got, got sound. We got sand. We got sound. Man, coming over Snoqualmie. I'm sorry. Pardon me. Good morning, Hurricane. Good morning. You fine young animal. Thank you. <laughs> How was the trip up here, Hurricane? It was good. It was really, really good. We took um, pretty much uh, what ninety all the way across. Ninety all the way across. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was nice. Uh, you know what was really nice? The views of snow, and it was wonderful, beautiful snow-capped mountains. But there was no snow on the road. That was nice. <laughs> nice and dry, even through most of the passes. Well, even Snoqualmie was like thirty-nine degrees this morning. We're down here at the Port of Tacoma at the rail yard and uh, dropping. They're dropping, or we're dropping this load and then they're restocking us to head back to uh, to the south. So it's, I like that, I like that. This is our first booked load. It's a round trip load I, I agreed to. Um, and we'll talk about some of that, that booking loads. But one of the things that appealed to me was we dock which we're docked right now, they're going to unload us and then they're going to reload us for the trip back down because we're dropping at the same facility, just different states. That's kind of cool. It's yeah, cool. yeah. Like the, when I got loaded in the first place, I think it was like 35 minutes and we're, we were on the road, you know, it was, it was quite fast. We were in and out. We, at the place we loaded, we were in and out. We're going to be in and out here. I got here two hours early. No um, snuggle bunk. <laughs> yeah, I've been missing snuggle bunk, but two hours early and... Uh, we weren't supposed to be here until between a window of 6.30 to 2.30. We could have been here last night at 2 in the morning, but I took my time because I didn't think they would get us in before 6.30 minimum. I thought we'd be sitting out on the street for a couple hours. <laughs> I got here, had to use the restroom, so I walked up to the building because there's a big shop. And uh, I thought, well, I'll go in the shop and see if I can use the, use the, use the bathroom. And as I walked by a guy in a Jeep... He said, you here for delivery? I said, yeah. He said, there's a guy in there now. He said, he's here at 2.30 every morning. He said, he'll go ahead and unload you. I said, what? So I went in, chatted with the dude. He said, let me get my forklift guy. We're just going to wait and get you done. He said, if you wait till 6.30, you're going to be behind 20 Canadian trucks. I'm like, man, I don't want to do that. This place is crazy. Was it not crazy getting back here? Uh, yeah, it was. It was <laughs> well, it wasn't like you had to do a figure of eight to even get to this area. And then to come in, we were, he was driving down. You've walked it already with the guy. And I'm like, there is no way I would drive a truck down here. <laughs> it's one of those lots where the guy walked me all the way back. It's probably a good quarter mile round trip walk. He walked me all the way back to show me where to come to because you got to get over on the right-hand side of the fence line. There's product on both sides of the fence. You see, when you go down all the way to here, there's actually a truck waiting to make a left-hand turn, but he can't turn because I'm parked. Um, it's one of those kind of lots. When you had to sli slide your tandems forward to make the pivot turns and then slide them all the way back to get loaded, unloaded. Yeah, yeah. It's been crazy. But anyway, we're getting unloaded. We should be on the road before 6.30. Out of here, heading back to the to the south. And it's supposed to be good weather. I was talking to uh, to my weatherman, Mr. John, who drives for us. <laughs> um, John G. Studios. I was talking to him. He said the passes looked good last night before we came over them. And then we were looking at, at weather maps, and it should be good to get out of here. I just don't want to hit snow. And I'm probably not going to book any more loads up here, but this was a pretty good paying load. Here's what I did. Let me let me discuss the load boards. Brothers Grimm has a really, really, matter of fact, I don't know if you guys are putting your app in. We're looking for another driver. Uh, we have three dedicated accounts. You'll probably come on board and go to one of the dedicated accounts first. See who you are. See who we are. We're a very safe company. No, no, no shenanigans clean logs. You don't ever have to run dirty to make money. You know, the three, the three companies we pull for on dedicated, you're probably going to start on one of those three companies. Just if you come on board, I don't know if Mr. Grimm's looking for a team or solo. I don't know. Um, but put your app in if you're solo, we have a, we have a truck. It's not one of the newest trucks because all our drivers pretty much right now, all of our drivers, I think we have 13 now, all of our drivers have brand new trucks. I think this this is a loaner truck that's waiting for the person and then the, your, your new truck will be in in a month or two. Um, from what I understand, we're getting bounced around because the forklift's in the back of us. Um, when you come here, understand, 
we run clean, we care about CSA scores, and we work, we hustle. Mr. Grimm, he's, he'll probably watch this later, and I'm not doing anything other than telling the truth. Mr. Grimm, Brad, is a whole different animal. He's a whole different animal. You know, you meet people in your life that have a capacity different than yours, and you realize why they're doing so well. When I came into trucking in 2016, coming off the divorce, still paying uh, child support, still paying some alimony, I couldn't, I couldn't make any risky moves because I couldn't risk having a, a week or two or three weeks or a month that, where I couldn't pay that stuff and pay the bills because I wasn't living in mommy's, <laughs> mommy's bedroom. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, I'm sorry. I'm stepping on her toe with my boot. <laughs> What's your toe doing over there? It's enjoying the nice carpet. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, anyway, so. What's he tell about carpet later? But he, he actually did a coaching call with me way back before he jumped in his brother's truck because his brother trained him to drive. And uh, he came out of med school, Mr. Graham. Different animal, different animal. When you're around people like that, you realize, like I remember playing when I was coach, when I was teaching uh, professional military education in the Air Force, at Langley Air Force Base. There was a guy I worked with that used to play college basketball. And he and I would go to, like we would always play the, the, the classes that we graduated, we'd always play them in, in, in intramural volleyball before they graduated. We'd go and you know, work out with them. And it was the instructors against the students. Well, this guy, when we were there early or afterwards, because I would always go to that same gym and swim during the, the winter months, but either before or afterwards, we'd get there and he and I would play some basketball. I'm not super good. I don't, I don't have great handles in basketball, but I was tall. So I played up until I was able to get my, my license at 15. Um, he was the kind of guy when he shot the ball, it was like on a string to the basket. And he didn't make, like he didn't go past college. He only got, I think, two years into college and he lost his scholarship, something happened. But he's one of those guys when he shot the ball, it was like, it doesn't matter which, which angle he shot at. And there's a point to the story. He shot the ball and it was like a ball on a string to the, to the, to the net. And it was all net, just choosh, choosh, choosh. I used to hate playing him because he was a little bit overweight. He wasn't a super athletic looking guy, but he didn't need to be because he could, he could throw the three from anywhere on the court. He was one of those guys. He's one of those guys that once you're around him, you realize, you know what? He's a different caliber player. You got to say hi to some peoples? Yeah, we got, uh, so anyway, let's see. Let me, let me, let me, let me yes, so anyway. Yes. Mr. Grimm's the same way. Mr. Grimm's out here just blowing the doors off in trucking. He's setting up a great program with trucking for drivers. Very, very conscious of the CSA scores. Very conscious of safety. Very conscious of finding the right drivers. There was somebody on the on the comments yesterday. You can go back and look at that video. They put in the comments, I, I applied a year and a half and I got the runaround. No, no, no. We have a 90% turndown rate. Understand that like it might not be quite that high, but we don't just take a driver if you just because you can fog the glass doesn't mean you're gonna come on board We're not looking for we're looking for a specific animal and You have to have a certain driving record a certain way of handling business a certain way on the phone when you do the interview with them a certain background Because we run different. We also get paid better than the average company drivers and I say company drivers lease op drivers We do have company drivers in the company um, but right now in a matter of him being in, like him having his, uh, his authority and doing this for three years, he's already got 13 trucks. I believe it's 13, I'm not telling his business. He's doing very well, different animals. So if you come over here, understand we're, ex we expect different because we play to a different level. That's as simple as I can put it. I'm sorry. I stepped in your toe. No, you were about no. to say something. Well, yeah. And the reason that uh, it hurt was because I'm barefoot. <laughs> she is barefoot. Because I was enjoying the new square carpets. What do you call them? Carpet squares. Carpet squares. They're a little bit fluffy. They're I got nice. so, I got some I got some shag carpet squares for the inside of the truck. <laughs> they're nice. They're nice and fluffy. They go with our new uh, blue uh, sheets and pillowcases. Are we telling stuff. people about our boudoir? No. <laughs> I'm just saying it's just a little bit nice, you know? Yeah. It's a little bit fluffy now. Yeah, just a, a little, little bit. bit. Not, not pink and foo-foo. Just a little fluffy. Because I'm not one of those girls. Who we got in the room? We've got Mark the Mailman. Good morning. Brent Adams. Sounds fun, you guys. Uh, West Cross. Morning from Tolleson, Arizona. Um, uh, la, la, la. Let's see. What is Chi, Chi Town? I don't know. Chi Town. Chi Town. What's that? Chicago. Chicago. Okay. All right. Chicago Neil, Town. Neil McCann. Hello from Chicago. Um, Af Afru. Uh, he says, where are we at and what experience are we are looking for? We're looking for at least two years experience and we're based out of the Northwest. Two years experience. We don't have to have any endorsements, but if you do what I recommend on my channel, get every endorsement, get your twig, get your passport. Not right now. If you don't have it, don't go do it. 
You don't need any endorsements to pull for this company. But now that we're on the load boards, we can pull anything. Yeah. We don't we don't have a flatbed trailer, so I'm not going to pull flatbed, and we don't have a tanker, so I'm not going to pull tanker. But we have a Twit card, both of us. We have passports. We can go into well, can't go into the north of us because of all that noise. But we could pull hazmat as well. The thing I'm seeing though with some of the hazmat loads, um, and I don't you know I say that I don't even know if Mr. Mr. Graham wants us to pull hazmat loads because that's his decision, not mine. Um, some of those hazmat loads aren't worth the money. You know, I remember people th t people telling me when I first began driving, even at GNP, it was only two cents more per mile to have your hazmat, you know, and be able to pull hazmat. A lot of dudes didn't want to do it. They're like, I'm not going to take that risk for two cents more per mile. I can't say I blame them. I can't say I blame them. But when I was doing diesel and and uh, and crude oil, the hazmat was super important, and I already had the two years with it on my license, so it helped me get in the oil field too sweet. Once I began pulling that. Uh. Okay, we got uh, Paul S. Vines, for, uh, hello from Arizona. Matter of fact, you guys put in the comments where you're watching from this morning. What is today, Thursday? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never sure. know what day it is. I think it's I Thursday. Don't, I don't either. I don't um, put, uh, Philip Congolero, hey guys, hey Philip. Uh, essential, essential man uh, is sunny in 70s in Texas. It wasn't like that last week, we know yeah. that for a fact. You guys were getting brutalized um, last week. And Afru, who asked that question, he's uh, in Springfield, Missouri. Um, Paul are H. you are you there? Are you there at Prime's training? You might be. I don't know Afro. Springfield Afro, you there at Prime getting trained? And then uh, Paul H is uh, in Atlanta, um, and he says, "Yeah, Hazmat doesn't pay." That's his opinion, you know. So yeah. Well, some of the loads I'm seeing on the load board for Hazmat, it's not worth doing it. It's not worth all the other considerations of it. So uh, Afro does have all his endorsements and a passport. He just doesn't have any two years experience, but it, it's good. It's it's just a matter of time. Philip Congaleros in, Sa in uh, Salt Lake City. All right, cool. Uh, and then Best Still One Hundred, uh, Northwest Arkansas. Northwest Arkansas, but this run up here was pretty. It was pretty clean. We had a we had a, a oh, couple. We do we do have to mention Pat Pat Lev. We. That's what she's got on, and she's got exclamation mark, a cold face, it's, uh, an alien face, and some other things. Well, it so. could be Pat Man, a man Pat, Pat. Pat Lev. Oh, it could be. Yeah, I don't know. Pat, I Pat's, don't know. It yeah. could be either or, or. So we're good. Pat, anyway. Pat, are you are you a dude or a girl? Um, but thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. But we'll get this stream done. We haven't I haven't done a stream with her other than yesterday's stream for the the driver. We need. I haven't stopped and done the stream. We've just been running. We've been we have. we've been running, and we've been snuggle bunking. Because now that I'm Snuggle Bunk certified, I'm trying to keep my certifications up. I was going to say, you've kept me locked up in the back of there, haven't you? <laughs> I locked up some wrong word. No, 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 no. Don't give them the wrong impression. <laughs> locked up some wrong word. I didn't word. mean that one. Anyway, take the shovel off my arm because I'll end up the digging myself. The shovel off your arm? I'll, I'll get locked. Up, Would you stop? <laughs> just stop. I'll end up digging myself into a oh, hole. Oh, you're already digging. You're just locked up shovel. Come on. Come on. <sighs> You Who gotta, else is in the room? You just got to remember, sometimes I'm British, you know? I'm not No, American. she's also just waking up and hadn't had a full cup of coffee, yes, so she's yes. a little bit delirious. A bit delirious. And then Mark, he says, uh, hi from Warwickshire in the United Kingdom. Mark, um, good to have you here. What time yeah. is it over there right now? What time is it in, the, in England? Uh, they're six hours ahead? They're like six, Actually, eight. nine hours ahead from us. Yeah, they're like Ke anything between like seven to nine hours ahead. So it's, okay. you know, or late lunchtime sometime, I think. Yeah. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, that's it. I think. You know? And the mistake I made on this load, the mistake I made, I wanted to get a like we we took off late. We weren't even expecting to run till Thursday or Friday this week. Actually, today because I've got not the greatest shirt, <laughs> but kind of throw the guns out. No, <laughs> we weren't we weren't expecting to even be on the road till Thursday or Friday today or tomorrow because of the windshield. Because everyone on Friday of last week, everybody was saying all the Kenworth dealerships. We don't have any windshields. We don't have any windshields. We don't have any windshields. Can't do anything on the weekend. Blah, blah, blah. Monday morning, we called. We, we, you saw the video. We called Freightliner. They put us in touch with Kyle's company. Kyle was out fixing us up in 40 minutes. We, we just, I, I never, I, we were driving by to go to a Love's to park. Yeah. And as we were driving by the Love's, right across the street, there's a Freightliner dealership. And I'm pulling in to park. And I thought, you know what? They have a Kenworth on their lot, just like a car dealership. They work on everything. They don't just work on just, you know, their brand on Freightliners. But there was a Kenworth used on their lot. And I told I told the Hurricane, I'm like, we need to call them and see if they can fix our windshield. Because the windshield is pretty generic in the sense of what it is, just like in a car dealership. If you have a broken windshield on a Ford, but you sell Chevys, you can get that windshield fixed. 
We called them. They put us in touch with Kyle. Within 40 minutes, Kyle's out, Kyle's out there fixing it up. It's, it's incredible. It was crazy how much brain damage we went through on Friday with people that, well, we don't have the part. And then Monday, <laughs> when I was on the phone, <laughs> then one of the Kenworth dealerships said, uh, oh, well, wait a second. We don't have any Kenworth windshields, but we do have a Packard windshield. I'm like, well, you're, I'm thinking to myself, you're telling me things. I don't really care why you're doing it, but it doesn't matter who makes it. I need a windshield. And he said, oh, we have 17 of those. <laughs> this was the same place we called Friday. You said we didn't have a windshield. It's like, I don't care what model. Just put one in. <laughs> well, what happens is, and I'll tell all you guys, this, uh, guys and girls, it's a lack of social skills. People doing their job, all they're doing is just their job. They answer the question they're asked. They don't think about how to solve the problem. We were told by all these stores, and I just called two of them back after that just for random. And I called them and said, hey, we're looking for a windshield. Do you have a Packard windshield in stock for a Kenworth? Oh, yeah, yeah, we have seven of them. On Friday, we had nothing. Every single dealership had windshields in stock that were Packard brand, not Kenworth brand. It, yet on Friday, we don't have them. We don't have them. We don't have them. By four in the afternoon, they said, well, you know, we're on your own. We can't do anything in the weekend. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Kyle would have come out and fixed us up Saturday. And we would have been on the road Saturday afternoon with under yes. a load driving. It's just amazing how people, I saw it in the car business all the time. People answer the question they're asked rather than listening to solve the problem. Enough of that. Who we got? <laughs> we got Brenton, just the last one. Uh, there's a few other before. He says, people who live for the weekend are trying to avoid anything on Friday. Man, I tell yeah. you what, it was crazy. Yeah. And you need to talk to the right person, Paul H. That's correct. Uh, it's 1.40 in the afternoon in, in the United Kingdom. It's 1.40 in the afternoon. Thank you, Mark. And then, um, yeah, that's it. It's, <laughs> it's something else. I love, I love this business, don't you? Well, we pulled in here this morning. This reminds me of the oil fields. We pulled in. I parked out on the street, walked over. There's nothing but trucks up and down the, the whole stretch of the road on the shoulder parked. I walked in and then you got to get back here and getting back here is nothing but heavy equipment. It's like a, it's like a pad in an oil field. That's what it reminds me of because you got inches to spare on each side. You got to slide the tandems all the way forward to make some of these turns. Uh -oh, you know, something. this boy's trying to come around us. We'll see if he can. He might, he, uh, possibly. He's going to try. Well, he was also waiting on the other flatbed to move. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know what? He might be. No. Anyway, anyway. So. We're solving the world's problems right now. We're solving the world's problems. That's what this reminds me of. That This yard reminds me of the oil fields because you're pulling up to a heavy-duty equipment area. Can you make it, bro? Got a long nose, too. It'd be tough to be back here on this lot the way this lot is with the long nose. That would be tough. That would be tough. He's going to make it. Good for him. He's got a low rise. He's a solo truck. Oh, and then I, I had I had to laugh. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Jody and Chase a shout out. <laughs> I had to laugh on the stream yesterday. Somebody put in the comments. You want to read that comment up? You want to find it? The one from yesterday. Yeah, no, I have a picture of it because I sent it. I sent it. <laughs> I sent it to uh, Jody just for fun. Someone put See? in the comments. Hold on, can I read it? Yeah, yeah, go well, ahead. Well, you read it. You read it. I love uh, the way you talk. Uh, Look, can I set it up? Yeah, yeah. Should I say his name as well? Um, no. Well, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. He's not the there comment. anyways. You know, someone's going to find this, him. This guy put this comment in the comments. Because, again, I know I'm very blessed having the hurricane in my life. Uh, a, a woman looks like this, fearless, speaks three languages, wicked smart, wicked good with people, and she enjoys truck driving and enjoys me. I know I've just won the lottery. I know I've absolutely won the lottery, especially coming off what I just came off of the last 10 years. I've won the lottery. This guy, listen to his comment. I thought I thought this was hilarious. I was driving down the road when she read it to me last night. I was crying a tear. I was laughing so hard. Listen to this. Well, I'm about to, ready to sell everything, and so to say, but I'm going nowhere with this relationship thing. It's always who you're with, where you're at, why you're friends with that girl on Facebook, why you're flirting at the party. OMG, I've about had it. Love to find a gig that you have. A beautiful woman who drives an 18-wheel big rig. The trailer. I added that little extra I'm bit. I'm sorry, I forgot to clap. Hey, maybe I could meet that mom and son team and drive with that fine young lady letting her son go free. <laughs> Don't I wish? <laughs> I just think that's hilarious. This guy's building the whole plan in his brain. Don't even know Jody, but he's like, listen, we'll, I'll, I'll move into the truck. The son can kick out. He can go drive solo for all I care. I want to drive with you. I thought that was hilarious. But I know I've won the lottery. I know I have. Thank you. Yes, I, I tell you what, I do have to say, it was it's nice to just uh, 
I love your carpets, by the way. That's really nice. They're our carpets. Our, our carpets. The pronoun, our no, carpets. No, they're really nice. They're, they're fluffy. They're nice. They're, they're really nice. And it's just nice to get up in the morning and put your head through the curtain and, like, trying to figure your bearings and where you are. And you're all jacked up this morning because it's just cool. It's I like, was... look where we're going, honey, you know. And I'm like, and there's no way I'd take a tractor down here. And, and you'd already walked it, so we're good. And I'm just sitting here in my man's T-shirt, drinking my coffee, just enjoying life, you know, and... It's incredible. It's just beautiful. It's a beautiful life. All I'm telling you, all I'm telling you folks, <clears throat> I can't say it. I can't say it because I'll take shots in my past. I can't. It's too easy. It's too easy. I've been very blessed. I've been very blessed with this girl. Very blessed. Cannot say anything bad about anything in my life. I love truck driving. I love the money. We're doing, we're doing just over a dollar a mile for this run, for a six-day run, and uh, we'll net out $1,000 a day net before taxes that's not great but it's my first load i wanted to get a, a six grand net to us load in for the week and then we'll get back on sunday i'll pick up a load friday um you know my what i'm shooting for you guys we have three we have three three load boards we pull off of um i mainly use one. Oh, it's gonna go ahead oh uh, May, uh mark the mailman says uh yes red you sure did win the 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 wife lottery and then Benton JS JA says, if you hadn't gone through all the BS that you could that you that you did, you could be where you're at now. And that that's true. That's true. That's true. Everything happens for a reason. I've told you guys out on my channel, and I wouldn't change a thing. Every bad thing that's happened has, has led to something better. Mm -hmm. And every down trend was was just leaving me a, a way to go up. Everything in my life, I've been so blessed in my life. If I wrote a book about everything I've done with my life and all the successes I've had, trucking has been no different. This woman's been no different. You guys wouldn't believe the book. You wouldn't. Like, you wouldn't believe what we've been through in just 10 months. Just the supernatural things that have happened with her being in my life. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> Sometimes we step back and I'm like, really? Wow. <laughs> anyway, I know I've been super blessed. I love this business. I love truck driving. I love the money. At least right now. We'll see what happens. A lot of craziness going on. Some of you folks also, let me just address this. You send me links. I don't normally open links from people I don't know. Um, only because there's ways people can, you know, put spyware on your stuff. Number two, I know all the stuff that's going on across the world and in Canada. Every, I know all that. I don't talk about things on my channel because, as you've seen, you don't have the freedom to speak freely anymore in the country I went to war for. And I went to war. And I don't have PTSD. I was in war twice. You know? Got all my teeth, all my hair. Good looking, unlike unlike somebody else we know that has allegedly fake PTSD. You know, this this all of this has been. I forget where I was going with that because I took a shot at that knucklehead. But uh, what was I saying? What was I going towards? The, the, See, I got distracted by talking about wasted people. Got, the freedom that we've got. I don't but know. I know about all those things you guys send oh, me links on. I just don't. Stuff, I it. just don't talk about it because I know that it's the quickest way to get to get things shut down. Because we're not necessarily free. Yet. Yeah. I mean, they're telling even even with what's happening with Rogan, you know, they're taking they're they've taken taken a hundred episodes down. You know, I didn't go to war for that. I didn't go, I didn't go to fight for my country for that kind of BS to be happening. I didn't do that. But I didn't know any better. I, I, I drank the Kool Aid, you know. And but I don't I don't talk about things because I tell you this, I've gotten healthier since I've turned the news off. Yeah. I've gotten healthier since I've stopped watching all the BS. I've stopped, I've stopped worrying about, I, my vote doesn't matter. I've told people in my life for decades that the votes didn't matter. They didn't believe me until this last couple of elections. You know, it's funny how, it's funny how if you've had chaos in your life, especially in your own house, how you read through the BS quicker than most people because there's an incongruency with things. There's an incongruency. And I see, I see BS quicker than most, and I see the lie of the truth and the truth of the lie quicker than most. Not that I'm looking for it, but I just pay attention to everything. So I just don't, I don't, talk, I don't talk about some things on my channel because you know what? I'm healthier not doing it, and I'm at a point in my life. I just, I just want to, I just want to maintain my snuggle bunk certification. That's all I want to do, <laughs> and keep driving the CDL 18 wheel, big rig tractor. You smack it oh me. no! <laughs> in my hand see look i've only got one hand smacking on me to get the clap clap you are <laughs> just clap, you clap, huh it was a clap clap it was a clap clap it was a clap clap but anyway I, I just don't talk about it but i appreciate you guys sending me links i just don't normally open them up 
Um, if you if you send me links and I haven't responded, it's because I don't really number one don't open them up, and then I don't want to encourage you to keep sending me more. I, I see them all. I see all the things happening. I just don't talk about the things, and I try to keep my mind focused on keeping my snuggle bunk certification and, and keeping my keeping my truck moving. Make keep. I'm sorry, keeping our truck moving, this making is, money, making good money. You know, this is what's important, isn't it? The rest this of is it's all fluff. everything else is BS, man. This is what's important. You know. I've always taken care of myself. Always. I'm doing nothing different now. Taking care of myself, showing her how to take care of herself. In 10 months, in 10 months, what's happened to you in 10 months overall? Without getting super specific. Well, Without getting in, in super one specific. sentence, I lost everything and gained everything plus, 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 plus. But in 10 months, I've gone from being in an industry that I wasn't really like I knew I was supposed to follow but I wasn't really sure what was going to happen and now I'm I'm driving down the road I'm confident I love this business um I'm I'm confident of like I've, I own it you know I've got it and I, I love I love just everything about this um and then it, it, with a little bit more detail I'm earning an amazing money that I didn't have before money that I couldn't ever imagine like that, my if if I was wanting this and this was my goal, I'm I'm up here, and and life, in our in our, in our, our relationship. If I, again, if this is what I if this is what I had, this is what I was thinking, and this is what I got. You know, everything is more, 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 more. Um, I, I just I'm happy. From truck driving, no less. From truck. Some of you women out there that are watching this, send this to your family members. Freedom. Send it. Send this to other women you know that are just in a horrible situation. Truck driving can change your game. Freedom, Period. freedom. That like you just, you're just free to soar. You're free to just be. You're free to just enjoy, enjoy everything about this life, and you're free to be happy. You know. And this morning, this morning when I stopped at the TA in uh, North Bend, Washington, there was a girl. But like this is this is the part of life I love. I, I loved when I was in the military, traveling to different countries. I never went out with the dudes when they went out. You know, to do what they did. Most good dudes travel in a pack because they're insecure. I don't. I never did that. I was always by myself, or maybe one other person. Never a group of people. Some most. Sometimes I was with another woman, with a woman from the from the flight crew, and we'd go look at other things. Get out, you know. We'd get off the tour bus and just walk the city rather than sticking with the tour. Blah, that kind of stuff. This morning is exactly why I love traveling. The way the way we're traveling. Love travel adventure. That's exactly why I love it. We stopped at that TA. Uh, she was sleeping. I went in, got got cleaned up, uh, did some fueling, did some things, and got cleaned up. Got her some hot water for her coffee. I'm waiting to check out, and the girl behind the counter. You could write a whole book about this. Her name was Perfect. Perfect. That was her name. Yeah. And if you're watching this, Perfect, feel free to comment. If you don't want to comment, I understand. Her name on her name tag said Perfect, and I said, "Is that your given name, or are you just calling yourself? You just love yourself a little bit?" I'll just get you know kidding her. She said, "No, no." She said, "When I was born, my dad named me Perfect." And she said, "I'm the old, I'm the oldest, oldest child." And my dad said, "I want to name her Perfect." He said, "Because in my, in his eyes, I was perfect when I came out." Uh -huh. And she said, "Now the tough thing about that name, just like that Johnny Cash song way back in the day, a boy named Sue," she said, "The tough thing about that name was I had to live up to it." And she said, "It's not always been easy." And she said, "I probably let it down, let the name down more than it's, I've lifted it up." But what a great like think about the the father who names his daughter and she says that she looked like she was in her 20s she had a she had a muzzle on so i couldn't really you know tell the exact age but i would have guessed she's in her low low to mid 20s but to look another person in the face and say my dad named me perfect because in his eyes when i was born i was you could write a whole book on that mm -hmm. and you could write a whole book on all the problems that came with being named perfect versus things you did what were you going to say Nothing. you got somebody no, else no no just uh, we got a few other Paul H says to, Paul H says to be financially stable is good as well. Yep. Um, oh, Benton J A. Uh, he was kind of. I love our subscribers. He was reminding you of what you're actually talking about. Yes, thank That's you. That's kind of cool. That's cool. I love our. I love our subscribers. Um, essential mailman. No, essential man. Essential man. He's grounding on the lawn, enjoying coffee uh, in beautiful southeast Texas, sun and watching the sunrise. Do you know what grounding is? Yes. What's grounding? It's when you put your feet to the actual earth and you get all the energy from the earth. Because she used to wear, she didn't used to wear well, was, shoes. Let's, let's put it this way. When I was living in Southeast Asia, I actually had to have flip-flops in the trunk of my car and sometimes in the basket of my motor scooter because I used to run around barefoot and actually jump in the car and drive out barefoot. 
and then realized I didn't have any shoes on me when I was in the city. So I was barefoot all the time. That's hence why I'm barefoot now, because I'm not driving and I'm barefoot now and enjoying my, um, enjoying this, the, the carpet. Yes. You know, yes. But, Our shag carpeting. We got some, we got some 90, <laughs> I'm going to get some disco balls for the, for the snuggle bunk. It's going to be, it's going to be if lit. I, if I have a chance, if I'm on a field or anywhere where the actual ground is not concrete, I am barefoot all the time. Barefoot, barefoot, barefoot. I love being barefoot. It's hard to wear shoes. When we first were buying, a, we're buying a couple multiplexes up in Wyoming. First, that's going to happen. But when we get our little A-frame cab on the side of a mountain with our two Akitas, we're going to have a hot tub and we're going to have a mud pit. Both. Did you say hot tub? A hot I tub. was going to suggest that. That's so cool. I'm making plans without you for that's this. That's so cool. I was, was going to surprise you, but then I told everybody. I was going to suggest a hot tub. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> But we're going to have a hot tub and a mud pit. I don't know if you guys done any research on mud pits. There's a reason mud pits are, have been around for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years. There's a reason. And all those negative ions from the earth, they all they all matter, man. They all matter. They so we're going to have that. And our two Akitas. We're created to be one with the earth a little bit, you know, not to get super thingy or anything, but we're created, to, well, we're created <laughs> to, you know, have our feet on the ground, in the earth, a part of life, not just concrete cities, you know? Yeah. That's why we're going to Wyoming where there's nothing out there oh and it's gosh. wonderful. It's just Was it gorgeous. not a beautiful ride coming across Niagara? Oh my goodness. All the way through Wyoming and, and Montana. Uh, Montana and on to Idaho. It's just, you, you know, you. I, I was trying to take the dash cam and maybe make some video. Doesn't do it justice. I tried to take a picture. Doesn't do it, it justice. It doesn't do it justice. You, we, we just sat there just driving along and just looking out the window. It was it was beautiful beautiful it's hard to have a bad day on a good day like it wasn't snowing there was no you know shutdowns it's hard to have a bad day driving up here and i love the beach because i mean you know, i lived oceanfront for a while i love the oceanfront like i loved our break at the oceanfront but i really love the mountains like the mountains fill my heart up so got another one we might not get out of here for a while once these guys all get pulled in a lot of long noses down here at the ports essential man says uh mud wrestling can be good Mud wrestling, yes. There'll be some mud wrestling, some hot, some hot tub wrestling, some some snow wrestling. Let me make sure he gets by me. This is this is ugly. This is ugly back here. I wonder if we could go like if it's if we go out the other way. Maybe. We, no, probably no. not. It's you gonna might. be ugly getting out of here. We got we got unloaded fast, but it's gonna be ugly getting out of here. But I hope that you guys are uh, having a good Thursday. I think it's Thursday. Hope you're having a good Thursday. I, I I drove too many miles for this. We we drove too many miles to make our money on this run. And uh, I made that mistake. I'll tell you what happened. We were getting the windshield done, looking for a load, realized we we're gonna be taking off, you know, four days earlier than we were told. I made the call in for the load. They had to get the, the dealer the 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 packet. There's a name for it, I can't think of it. Carrier the carrier packet. They had to get the carrier packet re-signed for insurance for Mr. Grimm. So I had the company send it over to them and then we're getting the windshield done with Kyle and then we did the video and I never called them back to like once that was done, I didn't even start negotiating the rate yet. I was going to wait till they got everything done and say, listen, you see, we're good to, to pull the load. Let's talk about the rate. And I didn't do that because on this load for the number of miles we did, I, we really, I really wanted to be closer to eight to 10 grand net. Um, I'm not sure I would have gotten it because the rates have dropped quite a bit. We still did good doing, you know, just over six grand net to us for six days. We still did good, but there's more money mm -hmm. and there's also shorter runs. But by the time all this began going on mo on Monday and then Kyle doing it, we did the video with him. He got us fixed. We're on the, we can get on the road quicker. We debated holding off and taking off Tuesday. I'm like, let's just go ahead and let's go ahead and make this run. We pulled up the, the maps to look at the weather coming in. Let's just go ahead and do it. Let's make it a six grand, there was, six days. There was day. a lot of moving parts, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But it was a net, it was a net, a net grand a day, just over a grand a day to the, to the, to she and I before taxes. Not telling you our financial business, but my focus now is going to be thousand, twelve hundred mile, eight hundred mile runs to, to get, a, you know, keep the, the fuel expense down because if the fuel expense is the biggest expense right now, you guys know that that are out there running, it's the biggest expense. Some of these states, it's five dollars a gallon. I, I never thought that I would see the fuel the same, almost similar prices as Europe. Because Europe was just ridiculous, and now we're we're getting there on par almost, and it's just it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, absolutely crazy. Ridiculous, but anyway. So I've enjoyed the load boards. One of the things about the load boards for you folks that haven't done it yet, and that's another thing Mr. Grimm has really laid out. Like you see everything. Dan Grimm, uh, the brother, he's really involved in some of that for the first couple couple loads. 
but it's looking for patterns. Like, cause I'm looking, we're looking for certain lanes, trying to stay out, of, stay out of the weather and it's looking for patterns, but you got to go through them. You got to see if the, if the company is a, is a company that's, that's credit worthy just in the, in the, what we've been running load board now for six weeks. Something like that. Yeah. Just in that yeah. six weeks, we've already had two carriers. We've had to blacklist because they didn't pay, right. you know, so you got to go back and double check their credit worthiness, do all these other things. So it's not just, you know, pick up the phone and call and it's not, it's also not just looking at three loads. Some of you guys have the company, you look at three loads and pick one. We're starting from scratch and you got to pick your lanes. It's quite a little bit behind the si scenes. But the way my brain works and her brain's even better at this because she picks up patterns like you nobody's business. Like I, I see it already. I see it. Now it's a matter of slowing everything down, making sure you're not moving the truck a lot to make better money. But this load is like, let's just get, let's get it. Let's get a, a, a 13, let's get a 13 grand gross load in net just over six for six days which is what we've done and uh rather than sitting all week in the truck you know having to having to make that payment what else you got baby girl let's see I baby gotta, girl i gotta open my phone again uh let's see uh jeff edwards greetings from israel jeff edwards what's happening brother um <laughs> there's some uh, quotes from uh uh, anyway, about shock carpets. Oh, Austin, <laughs> oh, Powers. Uh, Austin Powers. I'll leave them alone. <laughs> but you want to shag, maybe. <laughs> shag her later. <laughs> it's easy. Uh, well, you are British, so it's easier for you I, to say. Uh, I, it's easy for me to say, but you said it really. It was good. It was good. Um, let's see. Um, Terry Flores. Uh, hello, guys from Southern California. Um, they got all the snow, and now they're getting wildfires. I saw that all across the maps. There's a load of wildfires from snow just the, well, the week before. Crazy. And then um, uh, Crispy Jojo just says they do kind of miss. Crispy Jojo. <laughs> they kind of they kind of miss running the whole 48, uh, but they're not missing for an iron every time they come over a pass. Yeah, I don't. I, I'm I'm trying to get out of here without having to throw iron. I think we're gonna be able to get down 82 and 84 when we get back to Boise. We had to swing through Boise and get our mail and then jeff edwards says non-payers are one of the hardest things to just have to deal with being your own authority so, yeah 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 but a lot of a lot of a lot of moving parts a lot of things we're learning but we're doing good aren't we i'll tell you what to be able to travel like this dress comfortably she's in shorts now all the time even if there's like snow I'm, on the like ground itty bitty short yeah itty -bitty. Well, no, sorry i didn't mean that <laughs> They are any bitty no, shorts. I, mean, I never meant this. Anyway, whatever. But but like, it's cold. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but she's in them all the time. She's in them all the time. As long as your chest is warm and your head's warm, we're good. That's I it. I think we might have stopped. Possibly. I think he's. I think he's about to pull over and give us the paperwork. Hold on, let's see. Lean out with my No, he's. Oh, there he is. He's coming to the the driver's side. We all good to go, bro. You got a paperwork from your side? Yep. Right up there. Now let me ask you this, man. Uh, all these trucks blocking us. We got a. Is there any other way out than that? Uh, unless you think you can make that turn again. If I could go out that way, it's okay. And as long as there's no other trucks coming in, because I'll, that's the well, entrance. I know, I know. Can I go? So, we we might have her walk down there. I might walk down there and, and uh, block it. It's a tight turn. I've seen smaller trucks make that, but. Someone... I'm a super trucker. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll do our You're best, man. Oversized. <laughs> <laughs> I know. All right, well, listen, we're going to get going because we're about out of here. And I uh, appreciate you guys popping in for the day. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share. Throw a few more likes on the video now while you're watching. Appreciate it. You got a, a lanyard for this gentleman? Yeah, yeah. Uh... Red Viking Werewolf and? The Hurricane. We are Bominos.